Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Kanna Campbell. Today I want to talk to you about the five traps of minimalism that I've personally found. Things that have like helped me back or been confronting or challenging as I, I allow my love of minimalism to grow, evolve and flourish. So these are things that have personally happened in my life and I'm also sharing with you how I've overcome these challenges and setbacks. All right, so the first one is analysis paralysis. For me as a minimalist, it's really important that I shop mindfully. I don't want to waste money. I don't want to end up regretting stuff that I've purchased that ends up going out the front door. This really upsets me and it really frustrates me. So when it comes to shopping, I have to shop mindfully. I really need to think before I buy because I want to make sure I get an amazing return on my investment. Nothing to do with money, but about getting pleasure, value and gratitude back from anything I choose to buy. However, the flip side of this is it can take me a really long time to actually go and buy something. I remember I had to buy a really simple stool for my children's bathroom. Just, you know, like a simple stool that my kids could stand on whilst in the bathroom to brush their teeth. I reckon it took me weeks, if not a month, to go and buy this stool. I probably looked at 200, maybe 250 different bathroom stools and I was so incredibly overwhelmed. I couldn't actually commit to buying it. So what I have discovered is when I feel this, I guess I feel overwhelmed or I get this analysis paralysis, I have to draw a line in the sand. I need to have that mindfulness where I catch myself wasting precious, valuable time. So seeing it, identifying it and stopping it. So I had to draw a line in the sand, as I said, and decide on a stool to buy for my children, except the fact that it may not be 100% perfect, but it will serve its purpose and make peace with that. The second limitation or trapping of minimalism is wearing things out. When I first fell into minimalism, I really like pared down my wardrobe. I only tried to have like one or two pairs of jeans and just a few t-shirts. I tried to, I guess, fall that like idealistic attitude and approach to minimalism where you had this really strict capsule wardrobe. But the problem with that was I was finding I was wearing my clothes out. Clothes that I absolutely loved were starting to look tired and tatty and simply falling apart. So what I had to do was to overcome this challenge so that I still stayed true and authentic to my love of minimalism. And I found that at times I need to accept the fact that items will wear out. And sometimes to try and avoid that from happening or make things last was to buy, say, two pairs or to mindfully prepare in advance. And when I noticed something was starting to look a little bit tired, needed a bit of a rest and recharge, well then to have a backup item. For example, I had this Gucci handbag that I bought on a trip, a very important special trip to Paris eight years ago with Rocco. Now, this bag is one of my absolute favorite bags. I always get approached on social media asking if I'd ever be interested in selling it. And my answer is always no, because I love this bag so much. However, the other day I realized that the bag is starting to get a little bit tired and worn out. And I want to make sure that I get at least another eight years worth of love out of this bag. So I've had to admit to myself that I do need to maybe consider adding another bag that's not identical, but maybe similar that I will love, value, use and appreciate just as much so I can spread the wear across two bags and not feel guilty about it because I'm still living a life of authentic minimalism. The third trapping and challenge of minimalism is sadness. Sadness when something that you're really attached to, you really love, value, use and appreciate is done, it's gone, you've used it all up or it's completely worn out and can no longer be of use or value to you. For example, a great pair of jeans. I have a pair of jeans which I've been wearing for I think about eight years and I absolutely love them, but they started to get really threadbare and as much as I've been living in denial, I need to admit that it's time to let them go. But the problem is they don't make these jeans anymore and I haven't been able to find a replacement for them yet. So I need to accept that's part of minimalism, but it means also on the flip side, I've really appreciated those jeans. I really value all the times that I've been able to wear those jeans and feel good on the outside as well as inside. 
So a way of handling this challenge of minimalism is to be aware. Aware that clothes may run out, they may break, they may fall apart, they may not work for me in some sort of way. And as I start to notice that they're starting to get threadbare, to start thinking about eventually what other jeans might I buy that will I will love, value, and appreciate just as much that can eventually replace my jeans that I love so much right now and make peace with that. Challenge setback number four with minimalism is judgment. Now, I've been following a minimalistic philosophy for almost eight years, actually just over eight years. And I found personally that when I stepped into minimalism, I had a lot of judgment. People would actually laugh at me. People that I love, people that I knew really well would laugh at me at how little I owned. They'd come over to my house and maybe pull a drawer open or, you know, come into my bedroom and see my wardrobe and they'd be like, where are all your clothes? Like, where do you store them all? And I'd be like, that's it. That's everything that I own. And there were times where they weren't intentionally being mean and I don't really think they offended me really, but I had to deal with a lot of judgment. Now, this was great because this was a huge area of personal growth for me because I learned to stand up for myself and I learned to deal with criticism or judgment, but in a positive way that actually allowed me to become a more resilient person. So what I would simply do is reply back to people and say, well, I'm incorporating a minimalistic philosophy into my life. I'm really enjoying owning less. And I would share with that person why I love minimalism, because it gives me time. It gives me so much more financial freedom. It makes it quick and easy to find all of my belongings. And I value all my belongings so much more. And it's funny, those conversations, those educational conversations where I would share something with someone would actually have an impact on that person. And I would quite often find that that person who was judging me was also not long after my conversation incorporating a minimalistic philosophy in their own life. So it's about education and empowerment, not retaliating back or defending yourself. And then the final trapping and challenge of minimalism, and that is the financial one, not in a negative way, but in a, I guess, distracting or misleading way. You see, when you incorporate a minimalistic philosophy into your life, you can quite often find that you have lots of money left over. Sticking to your budget is so much easier because you're reducing the financial wastage, the financial leakage. And you'll discover at the end of your pay cycle, whether it be per fortnight or per week or per month, that you have more money left over than you did before, or you actually have money left over when normally there'd be, you know, your bank account would be zero or you'd potentially be in debt. One of the best blessings from minimalism is having money because you spend less of it. You value more experiences. And when you do value a purchase, you get such a great return on it. You don't feel that desire to return back to the stores. Now, one of the traps of this is you get to the end of your pay cycle and you discover you've got money. There is the temptation then to go and blow it. Take all those savings from your new minimalistic philosophy and to see them just literally evaporate. Your bank account drops down to zero. This is where a mindfulness approach is incredibly powerful. If you can proactively see those savings, make sure you go and transfer them to a separate dedicated savings account. As that money builds up over time from you embracing a minimalistic philosophy in your life, and you see those savings grow. And every time you save some money, you proactively transfer it into that account. At the end of a period of time, whether it be a week, whether it be a fortnight, whether it be a month, whether it be a couple of months or even a year, when you see that money slowly and steadily build up over time from your new lifestyle embracing Millison, you can actually put that money to one of your financial goals, such as building up emergency savings, maybe even saving up for your first home, maybe even helping prepare for retirement or investing in long-term growing passive income streams. My point is, make sure that you take any financial benefit that comes from minimalism in your life and put it towards building and growing your own financial wellness. Now, the reason why I've shared these things with you is because if you're watching this video, you're either a minimalist or someone who's interested in minimalism and is leaning in. Well, my advice to you is to keep going with it. This has been a profound journey for me where it has taken me out of some really dark and scary places in my life and given me so much more meaning, clarity and depth to who I am and what I stand for. I see my purpose and I see what's important to me. And of course, I absolutely love all of the financial windfalls that come from minimalism. So I really hope this video adds value to your life. It helps to make it easier to continue on with your own personal journey around minimalism. And of course, I hope that all my ideas and suggestions and sharing with you my personal story really helps you in your journey. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed. Let me know what you think of this video. If you want more videos on minimalism, and I will see you next Thursday 
for more videos. Ciao for now.